All right, so for problem 8.5-7, use more circle to solve the stress um, and shear xy on the what? Clement that is rotated by the angle of uh, theta equals a theta x s apostrophe. Show the calculated stress on the stress element oriented at this angle. Okay, so well, this is 8.57, it says solve the problem 8.3-7, so this is 8.3-7, and, and they give us some of the uh, background information of what's going on. Okay, so a lot of students, this is, this is going to be my first video on more circle, a lot of students struggles with this concept, and I totally agree with that. Um, it's super difficult uh, when I was first like learning about this concept. Um, you know, it's a little ridiculous. It's like, why, you know, we have transformation equations. Why can't we just plug it in and boom, figure this stuff out? Well, it's kind of like learning calculus, right? You learn about calculus, um, and in the beginning, you're like, well, I can figure out the area of a triangle based on side divided by two. Well, that's easy. That's like elementary school stuff. You know, why are we learning a calculus, you know, learning about integration that solves the area under the graph? Well, you know, because it can solve the area under the graph when we do not know the equation that represents um, the, the, the equation, right? So, you know, it, it, it's, trust me, it gets really super easy and, and, and beautiful uh, towards, you know, when, once you master uh, this, this skill. All right, so um, I think usually it's just constructing it, um, constructing the circle. So um, there are a few things that you sort of just have to know that, um, well, point A or point X, right, equals, so it's dash, I mean, stress in the X direction, the, room, the first one, uh, times the shear one, and then Y equals, and then Y uh, times the shear, okay? Um, this is basically, and uh, remember, shear stress is always in the negative x direction on the normal graph, so it's going downwards, and then this is still goes to the right. Okay, so first of all, what is x? Well, x is, let's say, what does it say here? 30. Okay, so, well, I don't know how to, well, let's just say somewhere here. Okay, let's say each of this, it's like 1, 2, 3. Let's see, how did I draw this on my engineering paper? Uh, yeah, so shoot. each one of those, it's like um, uh, 10 mega, megapascal, right? So it's somewhere around here, and you go down, and that's probably where X is, okay? 32 probably around here, okay? And then it goes negative 20 because, you know, about 2, you know, it goes... To, uh, goes to oh sorry this is a negative right this is positive so it goes down right because shear force is positive we have to go downwards for the y components and the x components we decided here so we call this is the x and then y is negative 32 okay so we go all the way and basically guys is you just sort of have to know I mean once the center is in the middle you know you draw a straight line so basically this is just completely on the opposite side over here, so that's y, and then you know go up 20 because you know there are two, two lines over here. And uh, a side note, right? You know, in a circle, we we you know the transfer the transform equation have a lot of like sine 2 pi and the cosine 2 pi, right? The reason we we uh, you know write them in in the form of you know cosine 2 pi is that you know we have one cosine that deals with one angle, right? Before it was like sine times cosine and stuff like that, it gets complicated. So this can just strictly tell you where the angle is. And the two pi is, you know, in a circle, right? So if this is, it says, you know, move 30, right? It means in the circle, it's gonna move 60. Just because, you know, the reality of applying cosine and sine, right? We always times two once we transfer that piece of information into the moral circle system, okay? So, yeah, that's why I would say, okay, so it's gonna, ro so um, it's going to rotate 60 degrees. But before that, let's draw a line. Let's see, from here to here, please. Yes, thank you. What? Okay, well, you get the idea. 
Now, um, let's see, this is good. So we got the, what? This is terrible, terrible. Let's see, let's, tr let's try this again. From here to here. Yes, well, apparently our Y should be somewhere here. Um, but, what, but what's important is that you're supposed to know. Okay, I give up. I'm just going to draw a Y like over here. It says Y is over here. Okay, is that you know that this is a straight line. Okay, so once we position them, uh, we know the average is pretty simple, right? The average is X plus Y. Let me write this um, like notes. Let me just write the notes in the black section of the board. So let's maybe try a different color, maybe yellow. Um, is that uh, average, right, equals x plus y uh, divided by 2. This is pretty simple, right? Easy stuff. Well, 30, I mean, sorry, 30 minus, I mean, sorry, 30 plus negative 32, that is uh, negative 1 uh, divided by 2, that is negative 1. So it's technically not like in the middle. It should be. Boy, so I have to sort of move this a little bit. Let's see. Can I not make it? Can I just make it free? Oh, yeah, here we go. Yay. All right, maybe shift one to the left. All right, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now here's X and here's Y. All right, so in this, there's a tiny bit of gap between here. All right, there's a tiny bit of negative one. Okay, negative one. All right, that's a mega Pascal. Remember the uh, units. Okay, so we'll find the average. Now we can find um, the radius of sorry the uh, yeah radius of the of the circle. Um, which also just happened to be uh, the shear max, right? Because, let's see, use yellow. So shear max is also R, right? Because shear mass happens over here, okay? And the shear minimum happens over here. Uh, it would just, well, it doesn't really happen when there's just shear moment, minimum um, because they're, they're positive over here as well. But yeah, this doesn't really tell you much. Um, so yeah, it's going to happen over here. And this is from the center of the circle down here. Remember, there's a, a negative one, like one unit distance, right? So it it's goes first straight from the circle to the, um, to the uh, I guess, circumference. So and that does just happen to be the distance of R. See how beautiful that is? You can just figure it out, you know, using a circle. Um, so we can calculate that real quick. So what is R? R is basically um, this position over here, right? Uh, there's sort of like a little triangle going on. Uh, so it'd just be 30. My, uh, sorry, 30 uh, minus one, right? Because it moved to the left by one, and uh, square plus 20, right? Oh, sorry. And then all of this is to the power of one half or, you know, square root. It doesn't matter how you write it. And this is the value of R, right? So we can find out what R is. And that is pretty straightforward. If you plug everything into a calculator. It should give you 36.89 megapascal. So now we know what, uh, what this is. So let's see. It, it, it tries to ask you where are the other. So we got the. Um, okay, gotcha. So it's asking for the the new rotated you know, position. Okay, so we know what R is, and now let's continue to do uh, more calculations. So remember, this says theta is going to move 30 degrees, which means it's going to move. Um, by how much? It's going to move by, uh, let's see, so 30, I mean, 60 degrees, right? So it's somewhere around here, uh, you know, just based on estimation, right? Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. 
somewhere there. We don't know what that is, but we know it's 2 pi. Now, before that, um, let's figure it out. Oh, yeah, never mind. Actually, this is pretty much it. Um, so we're trying to find, this is the new located x, x apostrophe, right? The new location, this is the y location apostrophe, right? As uh, as being you know indicated on the graph, right? It, it rotates by this much, and this is x, and this is y. We don't know what that is, but if you passed your ge geometry class, you should be able to tell this that this is you know a horizontal line, right? And then you can figure out what this angle is. We usually call it theta p1, and then uh, 60 minus this angle is going to give you the angle over here, which we can indicate it as. Uh, I don't know, gamma, right? And then use a cosine sine rule. You have r, right, times times um, sine gamma is going to give you the height and then times um, cosine is going to tell you where the, uh, the other place is. Well, remember, it's from the middle, right? So you have to minus one. Okay, so let's uh, get, get started on the calculation. Uh, if you already understood what I just said, I uh, explained, you should be able to get from here. Uh, you should be good from here. But uh, if you just need a little assistance, um, you know, we can keep going, just follow the video. Okay, so first of all, we need to find out what this angle is. And it's gonna be use, comes useful uh, in later, later videos or later uh, problems. But right now, let's just find out what it is. Well, we know X, right? We know the position, it's, uh, it's these two. Uh, we can just find out what the angle is, opposite over uh, adjacent, that is tan, right? So tan plus one. Um, well, this angle, okay, so here's another, well, might as well just talk about it now. Um, so this angle, sorry, this should be two, two P1. Okay, so this angle over here, this is two theta P1. And what this angle do is that it, it will uh, shift X towards here now this angle once when x is uh, lands on the uh i guess tensile stress axis is that it will be the maximum value right because x the x component is you know stress value right so once it reaches the horizontal line it's going to give you the maximum stress right tensile stress so and that's how we find out maximum stress and ma I mean, maximum tensile stress, right? So we rotate this to X, we rotate it up here, uh, and then the Y is gonna rotate up to here. It's also gonna give you a maximum number because, you know, the Y components of theta Y, it's it's also, you know, tensile uh, stress in the Y direction, okay? So that's what the two theta P1 tells you, okay? So you move up to here, and also, you know, remember we said you know, theta on the graph equals two theta on the on the circle, right? Look at this, y and x is perpendicular, right? That is 90 degrees. Well, two times 90 degrees, that is 180 degrees on the, on the graph. Do you see what I'm going with this? Just a little indication, a little, you know, a proof of that this is a working system, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna find out what this angle is. So, well, right now we don't care. We're, you know, the question didn't require us to find uh, what the maximum tensile stress in the x and y direction. So we can just say theta p1 equals half tan. Uh, so this is, you know, this over this, right? So what is the um, theta x? Let's see. Um, this is, let's see. We know that x is at 30. Now remember this moved to here by a negative one. So this is 31, right? Um, sorry, well, it's it's opposite first. So opposite from here to here, this is shear x, y, which is 20. So it's 20 over 31, okay? So this should give you an angle about uh, 16.41 theta, sorry, degrees, right? So once you find out what this is, um, well, you don't really have to find out this specific number. You can just save it as, sorry, we're really looking for this because this is, yeah, this angle is two pi theta uh, P1. So that is gonna be 32 
uh, 0.82. All right. So this is the angle here, and then we know that this is going to be 60 degrees, so it's going to be 60 degrees minus 32.82, uh, and that is going to give us gamma. I don't know what that is, because um, I just skipped it in my own uh, you know, calculation and just plugged everything into a calculator. So now we have what this uh, this angle is right. We have gamma, which is basically you know simple right angle trigonometry. Uh, we have what r r is six, you know eighty eighty six point eight nine. Uh, if I'm correct, yeah. Let's see, thirty minus one. Yeah. So this is going to be negative one. Right, so because you have to go negative one to the left, uh, plus r times cosine, right? R times cosine. What, what is that? Uh, well, tech, if you just times r times cosine, that's going to give you a number, right? But you have to base it on the middle of the circle, which is negative one to the to the left. So just add it at the front. Oh, you can add it in the back. Whatever. Cosine of you know gamma is what we calculated over here. It's, this is going to give you a the distance over here, right, from the center of the circle to x, where x, the new x position, and the position I believe is 81.8 megapascal. This is the x apostrophe, and then sorry, this is a little messy. And then this is a zero plus r sine of of uh, theta. I mean, sorry, uh, sine of gamma, because you know, y direction you never really move, right? It's always in the middle, so um, this is gonna stay here. So it's not being the circle can only shift left to right. It doesn't shift up, you know, up and down. So this is, you know, so it doesn't shift up, you know, up left to right. So it's right in the middle. So zero plus r times sine of gamma. Uh, that should give you somewhere about. Negative 16.8 megapascal. Uh, that should be your other number. Um, and negative, that just means that it's going downward. So in reality, what it looks like is this. It would be um, so this. Um, this is 16. Oh, shoot. And then this is, you know. So let's let's uh, let's indicate this. This is 16.8, just because it's pointing inward, so it's a negative. This is going outward. This is still positive, and this is uh, 31.8 megapascal. Okay, so we'll find out what this is. Now we just have to find the the new uh, the new. Let's see. Oh my bad. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. No no no. Uh, let's erase this. This is not 16.8, right? Um, this, I am extremely sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this will give you the uh, shear stress in the x-y direction. Remember, because this is the vertical distance from here to here, and the vertical distance of both of the points is, and you know, uh, x-y, right? Shear stress in x-y. So well, it will still give you negative 16.8 megapascal, but the shear stress, when, once it rotates, uh, it's going to change direction. I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to change uh, in, in this direction. All right. So before we focus on these two corners, now it focuses on the bot top left and bottom right corners. So that's going to give you this. And then the last one, which is this uh, tensile stress, uh, in the y direction, the new one, uh, that is going to be, let's see, since, well, this is basically, you know, if we have it here, we can find out what this is, right? Like, it's just 2r, right? Or, um, sorry, or we can just calculate it from the, from the middle position. Um, it would just be negative, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 31.8 megapascal um, times negative 1 um, minus negative 1. Oh, so the negative 1 is going to 
to be at the front. I'm just gonna just gonna write it at the front because you know we're going to 180 degrees, right? It's it's going to in the negative direction. So I'm gonna just add it here uh, for less confusion. Uh, it's gonna be uh, plus negative one times two, right? Um, because this is already negative one, and then it's, you're gonna go this way. This is gonna be and add another one. So this uh, it's going to be negative 33.8. Uh, megapascal. Okay, so it's basically this uh, right from here, which is the middle up to here, yeah, and then you you gonna shift it around, which you already moved right negative one from here, but we count we counted in in this calculation we flipped it over so that we counted negative one twice. So I guess a uh, a right way of doing this uh, I guess it applies to everything. So it would be apostrophe, right? Tensile stress in, in the x direction, apostrophe plus um, the center of x. So it would be this average times two, okay? And that's how you find apostrophe y. So this is an equation you can apply in any, any direction uh, once you try to find y. But, uh, you know, you draw a short of know where it is. Okay, so this equals negative 16.8 uh, megapascal. Uh, this is negative 33.8, and then this is, um, yeah, sorry, this is negative 3.8, and uh, right here, this is 31.8 megapascal. Okay, and these are the three information that you're trying to look for in this in this one. Sorry, it's a little mumbly. I made it a mistake during in the middle, um, but. Yeah, just do more practices. You know, it's it's kind of like studying calculus when you know you're meeting with a new system. It's kind of a little you know daunting at the beginning, but you know if you think about it, you're not really finding a new way to calculate this, right? You know how to find you know what, how to calculate a circle, some characteristics of a circle, you know the trigonometry characteristics, and it's just you know you're finding R. That's the most amount of math you could do, right? It's inverse of tan, and, and square. So the mathematics is really Excuse me. It's really easy once you understand how everything works. Um, but besides that, you sh you know you should be good to go. Yeah. Everything else is just conceptual and just do more problems and you know what it is, right? All right. Well, hope this hopefully this was helpful. Sorry for the long video. Go like on your studies, and I'll see you in my future videos. Bye.